First of all, I apologize for all the background noise you're gonna hear. There are five printers up and running and doing prints right now, so you're gonna hear some stepper drivers screeching in the background. So this right next to me is the Fulgertech i3 Mega. We did a live stream series of building this about a year and a half ago, and we got a working stock out of the box, and then we decided to do some upgrades and tweak it. And we got most of the way through there, ran into a few snafus and said, you know what, let's shelve this right now. We got some other things we want to work on. We'll come back to it later. Well, now is later. So what we'll do in this video is I'll tell you about the issues we've run into, uh, some ideas on how we can fix it. We'll try to implement those changes and see if we can get this big guy printing because I could certainly use one more printer out here on the farm churning out prints. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. Well, first of all, welcome to our Nerdy is Cool, where I talk about all things nerdy and cool. 3D printing, R2 building, BB-8 building, you name it, I'm into it. My name is Paul, welcome. Now, if this is your first time catching one of my videos, hit the button down below and become a subscriber. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. If you're a regular visitor, welcome back. So, here it is, the Fulgertech i3 Mega. And there's a lot of pros and cons to this kit. It's basically kind of an inverted CR10 where the stepper motors are mounted up high and the gantry is just kind of hanging there. <laughs> so that's one of the design options on this printer that kind of fascinate me. Um, if they were on the bottom, it would solve a few problems. Now, I mentioned earlier in the intro that I was gonna cover some of the issues that we ran into uh, earlier, and I've had a lot of time to uh, think about and come up with solutions, and uh, there were others that had contributed some really good ideas during the live stream series. My good friend Keith, I haven't been in touch with him with a while, for a while. If you're watching, I hope you like what we're doing. But uh, Keith had a lot of great ideas and solutions, as did others, and uh, well, let's just go by them one by one. So the first issue that I have is the couplers that go from the stepper motor to the lead screw. These are they slotted type, the, they kind of get stretchy over time. I experienced that with my original CR10 over time. Uh, it got kind of pulled out a little bit. If you measured it compared to a new one to what that one was, you could definitely see that it had stretched out by about a you know, eighth of an inch or more. Uh, metric, I don't know what that converts to. But in this case, what happened was when we were doing our first steps or tests with the Easy ABL, we were noticing that as we went across and did some of our G29 probing, we were all over the place. So I think since the gantry is basically hanging by these guys, I suspect that's part of the issue right there. To remove that issue, we're gonna go with the solid couplers that are all solid one piece. And I got a close up here I can show you as well too. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace those. We'll carefully get those installed. Uh, we'll go through and level the gantry once those are in to make sure everything is you know level for good printing. And then we'll move on to the next area of concern. So the next area of concern is going to be our Y axis. By default, the limit switch for the Y axis is inside of this frame, okay? And that's fine if you're using the default hot end that comes with the i3 Mega. The issue we have is that we customize and are using a different mount. So what's happening is that as this goes all the way to the end of the Y axis, okay, we still have about 25, 30 millimeters of usable print surface that we could be using. So what we're going to do is we're going to relocate that Y limit axis and I can't seem to get the words out right today, sorry guys. But what we have is we have a nice mount that Keith made up and this is going to attach to the, I'll just demonstrate here, on the outside of the frame so that now this thing is going to go further out and this also has a little bit of play where I can move it in or out uh, a little bit, I'd say about you know 20 millimeters of uh, variation here where we can gain that extra distance we need. This should be the easiest of all the fixes to make to this thing, quite frankly. So that, the Y axis limit switch relocation uh, should be pretty simple. So our next area of concern is the integration between the TH3D uh, Easy Connect and the Z uh, uh, limit switch. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. So essentially what we're doing is, as we do in the uh, kit, is you would unplug your connector and plug it into this. 
Now, most of the printers I have have a two-wire cable. The Fulgertech kits use a three-wire cable, so it took a little bit of experimentation to find out you know, how to remove the pin and plug it back into the connector so that it would work with the TH3D you know, uh, Easy Connect. Now, I believe I have it right. We'll test it shortly. But if this is not right, I certainly have enough leftover two-wire connectors uh, from the various upgrades I've done to my CR10s and others that if this wiring setup is not going to work, I can junk it and replace it with a known good and working setup. So again, hopefully another easy tweak to make. The next change, I believe I already made this during the, uh, the assembly video. I'd have to refer back to that to be 100% honest, but the one thing I'm doing is I, any place I find bed springs, they're going away. I'm gonna use solid spacers and we'll rely on the Easy ABL proximity probe to make it level, figure out our offset, and hopefully when it builds this mesh, it'll print nice and level. The, the reason for this is I'm not crazy about springs. There's, there's basically eight of them on here. Um, the other issue is that because this, the frame of this printer doesn't make it so you can quickly or easily get under the bed to adjust the tiny little bed knobs to move up and down. Uh, if you try doing so in the front, you're gonna be coming you know, close to an ACM edge, which is very sharp. Uh, one is right next to the Y belt, so you definitely don't wanna have your fingers anywhere near that. So, I mean, it's obviously there are compromises when you design printer kits, I, I get that, but uh, on this one, I'm just not a fan of where those little knobs are gonna be, and I prefer to go with just the solid spacers as I have with other printers, and just trusting my AVL. So that's the next upgrade. Okay, one in, and do the rest. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the new Y end stop here. Uh, we've got the uh, big giant screws here that are going to be uh, uh, attaching into the uh, uh, aluminum extrusion. Uh, this has room to go back and forth. He's got a nice little shelf for this to rest on. I wish there was an extra hole here, but, but we don't, but this is what we have. So we'll work on getting this uh, installed in the back. We'll start moving the Y axis and see what the right distance is going to be. Okay, I'm looking, this might be an oops. Looking at how far back this can go before the uh, slide actually hits the frame. So all the way back, okay, and that's the clunk. And then I'm looking at where my hot end would be in relation vertically. So, I don't know, maybe I can't get any better than that. So I'm wondering if I'm better off just moving that end stop back inside the uh, here and just moving it further back because outside, see if it's outside like the plan was, it would hit here, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really... Hmm. I kind of... <laughs> I'm reminded why I paused on this. Yeah, so... Maybe my better... Maybe it's better to leave it inside and just push it further back. Now this is why we experiment. Okay, so it's probably hard to tell from this angle, but... There, there's the two linear blocks. There's one on this one, on this side rather. That one's further back. So my thought was, I've relocated this limit switch back here. So now when I slide this back, it hits over here, which allows me to go further back. And I have to lower the Z here to see how close or how much distance I've gained. Might be the best I can do until a new mount is made or if we just leave it as is, but look at that Z down there and see what we've gained. So you can see that the closer X, we gained a little bit. I mean, we still, it's about 10 millimeters. So she's not gonna be 300 by 300. 
That might be the best I can do. Unless I want to get radical and redo that whole mount. But as far as what I can do with the frame and the linear slide blocks where they come into contact uh, with the inside of the frame, that's about as good as I can get it. Okay, so I have the uh, new adapters in there. They go between the stepper motors and the uh, lead screw. And next thing, you want to make sure the gantry is level. Um, now, <laughs> granted this is not super scientific, but I have two coffee cups that are pretty much identical. I measured them and put a uh, level on them, so they are exactly level. So what I can do is uh, I can uh, move this guy down till it stops, move this guy down till he stops. Friction on both. So there they are. And uh, go back up. <laughs> and somewhat level gantry. Now to fill it with coffee. Okay, so we did the first boot up and the uh, X, Y, and Z is homing just fine. Uh, now for a bed surface. Um, what I wanna do is usually I would use a, uh, I'd like to use a magnetic bed with spring steel. I don't have any right now, I have some on order. Uh, so what I have is, here you are. <laughs> That's a neat little special effect, isn't it? So I have a mirror, and uh, uh, I only use these very often since I've been using the spring steel beds, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, uh, uh, what do they call this stuff? This is called CPU GPU heat sink. It's like a, a silicone adhesive. Uh, it's got uh, the waxy paper on each side so I can peel and apply. Rather than using all the binder clips everywhere, I'll attach those, one in each corner and one in the center, and that will keep the bed stable on top of the moving bed. And I won't have to worry about dealing with the binder clips, which, from the way this thing lines up, they wouldn't reach anyway. So, uh, and that'll be good for our testing. So, on with that, and then we're gonna have to do a little bit of work in the firmware to, uh, we're gonna have to jog this thing around to figure out what our real Y distance is. We know it won't be 300 because we can't reach that far. So uh, we have some jogging to do in Simplify 3D using the machine control tool. Or I could use Proctor Face or uh, actually even Octoprint, but I'm gonna use Simplify 3D because that's what I have. Okay, the uh, paper's off the back of all these. And we'll Flip this guy over, try to center it up as best I can. Push down the edges. Fingerprints galore and all, but I get the Windex handy so I can clean that up. So there, um, you may be wondering about adhesion. Uh, in addition to this, uh, when I do test prints, I'm gonna hit it with a mist of hairspray, uh, which is basically PVA. Um, until I have a better solution. Okay, so, change my sweatshirt, the other one was too thick. <laughs> so, uh, what I've done now, uh, as I mentioned this step before, we got the bed in here, and I've got a USB connection to the printer, and I'm using some 5.3D, and one of the first things I did is I did a auto PID, because I have the firmware open, and what I want to do is, as I'm going through there, uh, there was a couple things I did. Now that I have the auto-tune PID numbers, I can put that into the firmware. I also used a jog movement, and I found that on my Y-axis, I could get from home to 280 just fine. So I'll make that my new uh, Y dimension. So it's 300 by 280 by 400. So, you know, so we lost 20 millimeters. It's not the end of the world. So under the firmware, I went under the bed size, and that's where you would set the dimensions of your bed, X and Y. So that's where I made that adjustment. Um, so I'm making those changes. I'm not sure this is Marlon 119 or not. I think I've got 118 in, in, that I have open right now. I don't want to mess around too much with it. I just want to take what I have that I know works and get it working on this printer. Uh, I'm checking the E steps for the uh, Titan Arrow. It's not using the Titan motor that they usually include. I'm using the stepper motor that came with the kit. So I know that's going to have a lower number than the Titan numbers. And what else have I done? So I've got that going and PID. I went through and I made sure that uh, uh, automatic bed leveling was enabled. And the ABL is turned on in the, in the firmware. Uh, it's gonna be doing the bilinear. Uh, it was set to do three, so we would do three by three, and I've uh, made that a five. So now it's gonna scan along five points, uh, X and Y, and uh, that should ensure a better, uh, you know, uh, uh, when it goes ahead and builds its mesh. 
and the next step after that, I'll upload that firmware, and then I need to go through the steps that TH3D lays out uh, for uh, getting their uh, uh, probe to work just right. It is working. It did when I had it home on Z. It did stop. Uh, I'm not sure where the distance was, but this is the first time for this printer using the uh, TH3D Easy AVL. It's the older one. Uh, it's not their new Pro one, and it's the Slimline Pro, so uh, that's why it fits so well in there. So we have to go through the steps of heating up the bed. We got to go adjust the uh, sensitivity of the proximity um, the sensor, and we also need to make sure that uh, uh, even before I go that far away, I got to make sure that that sensor is mounted properly. I believe the instruction say needs to be between one and two millimeter uh, above from where the nozzle is. So I'm going to go through those steps real quick, and with any luck, the next time I come on we'll be getting ready to do some sample prints okay so a little pause in the action here so we had difficulties with the easy ABL mini we were winding up all over the place on our Z offset between 7 millimeters and 21 millimeters uh, Tim at TH3D said you get a really old one get the pro one it's way better so that has arrived and uh, get a little packet here in the control box Get the printers running in the background here. Again, sorry for the background noise. So the not so fun part is going to be getting the old one out and installing the new one. I'm hoping everything is pretty much the same size. We will shall see. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be a pretty aggravating <laughs> installation process. We're gonna look at his instructions, find out what we should be doing before we start dismantling anything. And hopefully, let's think positive, this is the path forward to things working. Here we go. Okay, well, unfortunately, I had to take the entire uh, E3 arrow out to get this guy in, and uh, overall, I mean, it fits inside the hole and the mount. The trick is going to be uh, facing this so that you can access the set screw. And right now, uh, of course, with no HUD installed, I don't really know how far down to get this. So, um, I am hoping when I put the arrow back in there, I can access and turn that nut a little bit. There's not a lot of room in there, so this must <laughs> this might be a frustratingly slow process. Okay, um, it was uh, a little bit of a hassle there, but uh, it's in. It's about 1.4 millimeters uh, above the nozzle. Uh, <laughs> They say it to be between one and two, or depending where you are on the instructions. Uh, but uh, it's in. Now we're heating up the bed right now, and we're going to work on calibrating it. That is a very small set screw in there. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. And uh, that is way in the corner back over here. I'm not going to zoom in, but it's way back over here. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of fun to get at. And what I'm going to do with it is, even though it's not a perfect fit for my test printing here, I'm going to use it to adhere the bed to the surface. Because when we were doing the first attempt, we had these big binder clips. And the probe is on this side, and of course this whole assembly comes down. So when I was trying to probe here, it caught on this and it was bending. Uh, and then it was the same issue uh, as well. Uh, on the other side, it made contact or the end of the probe was snagging the wire. So basically, these binder clips are good for office supplies, but not for printing. So we're going to give this another go now that that's on there. Here we go. Skirt. It's going to do that first layer and take a look at that one still. 
Okay, the end, right? Well, not exactly. There's still a few remaining issues. Uh, one of them is every now and then my LCD screen turns to garbage, and I suspect that's because the ribbon cables are near the power supply, so I have to insulate them, wrap them up in some aluminum tape or something, and that may or may not resolve that. The next issue is the SD card is, well, two things. It's largely inaccessible being behind the LCD screen, and the way that the printer stands, it's difficult to get your hand under the, to get at it. Um, the next issue is that even if you do use the SD card, half the time it's not recognized by the system. So something's going on either with that, it's not the card, it's something doing with the controller or something, but I don't know, I don't wanna go there. My workaround was to just install an Octoprint server using a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus and putting the latest version of Octoprint on it, and that's up and running, and that is working very well uh, getting my print sent to the printer. The other remaining issue is the part cooling fan. It's using a 24 volt 5015 uh, part cooling fan, and what's happening is that it you can see it want to start, but it's not always starting, and I've noticed on a few test prints where part cooling is really important, it's, it's kind of failing me. There's a few areas where I checked in Simplify 3D, there's a checkbox where you can blip the fan. Um, that wasn't the fix. I've gone through the Marlin firmware, I've tried a few things there, so that remains one of my few outlying issues with this printer. Other than that, I'm very satisfied with the TH3D Easy ABL Pro has worked amazingly well. Uh, I can basically start a print on this thing and walk away because I know it's going to get an excellent first layer. And the prints that I've been doing, minus the limitation of the part cooling fan, have come out very good. All right, so what do you think of the upgrade? Most everything we've done to make the printer work better is working. We got that part cooling fan we got to resolve, but I think that'll be something that is fixable eventually. Uh, I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. I thank you guys for watching. You can keep track of me on social media. Here are my links. I also have a 3D printing form. It's been out there for a couple of years. We'd love to have you guys check it out. Link is in the description below, 3dprintingforums.us. And that said, well, I have other upgrades in the wings, so let's wrap this one up so I can move on to the next one. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Stay nerdy.